Well, hello everybody. This is Technoli, and I'm back. Yep, been gone a little while, and uh, we've got to do some new business here. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of background. The reason that I've not been doing videos uh, for the last quite a bit of time is because I got extremely busy in my regular daytime job, which is flipping houses. So uh, got really busy, open core, went through a lot of changes, and um, it got more and more difficult to even make EFIs that were dependable, and it just got to be too much for me to do both the YouTube channel and repairs and flip houses. So anyways, I'm not doing that anymore, so I'm back doing this, and... I want to build the YouTube channel much bigger than it already is. So I've got some exciting news. I'm going to be giving away EFI folders in all of the new videos that I do for 2023 from now on. Uh, we're just going to give away the EFIs. And so why would I do that? I want to build the channel and have more and more people wanting to Hackintosh their PCs. So I figure that if I give the EFIs away that I know that are working, then that will increase viewers and views on my channel and increase subscribers, of course. But I'm also offering a new service right here on the webpage that is free PC repair. So what in the world is that? If you have a Windows machine that's broken, whether it's a laptop or a desktop, I will repair it with no cost to you other than shipping and the cost of any parts that may or may not be needed. And you ask, why would I do that? It is also to expand the viewership of my YouTube channel. If I can do things besides Hackintosh builds, I can do PC repairs online with new videos, that will also increase my views on YouTube and, of course, build the channel. So those are the new things that are going on. I am offering for you guys to send in your motherboard with this Get OS installed and Zoom support for people that just can't wait, uh, that need you know immediate access to uh, services. So what we're going to have is, like at the end of this video, we're going to have the EFI start to build in, on the download page. So you'll be able to just simply go over here to the downloads page and just download the EFI that will be here for whatever particular motherboard. And the motherboard that we're doing today is a Gigabyte Z490 UDAC. It's a Comet Lake motherboard. Uh, in this particular one, we've got an i9 uh, processor in it. And uh, this is 10th gen and 10 core processor. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start with this one today. I'm going to show you a new way of building your EFI folders for those of you that still want to try it yourself. And uh, it's a much simpler process. You do run into some problems sometimes, and we'll go over some of those uh, issues. And then the follow-up video to this will be the new way you need to do USB port mapping for these newer OSs like Big Sur, Monterey, and Ventura, where you know your USB 2s or your USB 3s are not working. So it's, I've got a way to work around that so you can get those to work, okay? So if you have any comments or anything, please put them in the description below, and I'll try to answer as many as I can. And I really appreciate you guys sticking with me and for watching my videos. Really do appreciate it. So here we go. Let's get started with this new way. Okay. 
Okay, guys, so here we go. Um, there's a new program called, let me show you here. It's on my downloads page. We're going to need this. OC Auxiliary Tools. And you can click right here if you want and just download it. You can build your EFIs in Windows if you want, Linux, or Mac. I downloaded it. It's right here. And so what we want to do is just open that up. And it opens up like this and just drag this over to your desktop. I've already done it, so we're good to go. Now, as I said in the beginning of the video, this computer is a 10th gen, okay? So when you first open this up, you want to right click and then click open, and then it will open. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to go up here to edit and go to the database. All right, so in the database, we've got all kinds of generations of different motherboards, okay? Now, ours is a 10th gen, so we go right here, 10th gen. Um, and we want to use the iMac 20, 2 because ours is an i9. If you're using like an i3 or an i5, you want to use this particular uh, SMBIOS setting. And then we're going to click Generate EFI. Okay. Uh, now here it tells you that finished generating the EFI folder on the desktop. The following files do not exist in the database at the moment. Okay, and so this text right here, CPU friend data provide dot text. Okay, so we just say okay. All right, so now we've got our folder right here. And if we look inside ACPI is already handled for us. Kext, though, only some of the kext are here. We still need the LAN controller, which on this particular motherboard is a Realtek 80118. So we're going to need that and a couple of others. So let me show you what's going on here. So we go back here, and under Tools, we have nothing. So we're going to need something there, too. Drivers, we do have what we need. And Open Canopy is already included in this, which is your uh, graphical um, boot menu, if you want to have that. All right, so we're good there. Now we come over here to the actual program, and you'll see here, these are all the sections that we used to see in Proper Tree the ACPI, the booter, you know, all of this. And what this tells us is as these items are turned on, okay, they're all set to true. So now we can go over to quirks, and everything is already done for us, okay? Booter, nothing there. This is where we have kernel patches. And these first three, if you'll see the little hash mark be before them, those are all turned off at the moment. This is one, though, is turned on. And this is for the built-in display controller, um, which in 10th gen was still possible. So, uh, But with Ventura and uh, Monterey, there's no longer support. So now we click on Kernel. And we see we've already got all of the text. And notice here, you're going to see that they are the latest versions. Now, there's some of these that are not turned on, and that's because they don't, you know, the, the program doesn't know if you want to be, if you want to include them or not. So the ones that I did include were this one and this one in our, um, EFI that I just did on this particular Ventura build. I did not use this one. This is for i9 10850s. I have a i9 10900. All right, so then we can go over here to quirks and 
we see that everything is already done for us, guys. This is amazing, okay? So we're good to go ahead and move down here to miscellaneous. Now this is where the menu, when you first boot up, this is show picker. We definitely want to see the menu when we come up. All right, and then these are tools. Now, in the new version, the newer versions of uh, Open Core, the Reset NVRAM has changed, and now we have to use one in Tools. Um, and the one that was in Tools was called Clean NVRAM. All right, so let's go back over to my site here real quick, and let's go to Open Core Versions, and we'll just download this one, the latest version, the release version. Okay, and we'll come over here and just grab it, put it over here. Now, I want to use that clean NVRAM reset because sometimes when you're booting up a new Hackintosh, you're just starting out, you'll run into problems, you'll run into errors, you'll run into stops where it's going along and everything seems to be working fine, then all of a sudden it stops. Well, it remembers that the next time you boot, and so you have to clean the NVRAM. So we want to have that option when we come up to the picker to be able to clean the NVRAM. So we'll go in here, and we'll go over here to um, X64, EFI, Open Core, Tools, and we want to get this clean NVRAM. Now, here is the folder we're working on, the EFI folder, right? This is the one we're building. So we're going to put this in here. So we'll just grab it and put it in there. All right. So now, when we go back to our OC tools, we see that it saw it and saw that we put it in there and it turned it on. So it's ready to go. Now, all of these other items are already taken care of. You don't need to worry about them, okay? Sometimes we have to worry about this. Sometimes it needs set. The security or secure boot model will have to be changed, but for this particular motherboard, it's okay. NVRAM. All of these items are fine. We come down to this one here, and we need to change a couple of things. If you remember in... The old days, we have our boot arguments in the open core or the uh, config.p list that we have to add in, and we still need to do that. Uh, while we're right here, I want to set this to eight zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and hit enter. All right, so let's go back over to uh, open core. And we want to look up the guide. We're going to go over here to Comet Lake, and we want to look in the guide down here at Boot Arguments and see what we think we might need. All right, so Quirks. We'll come down here to NVRAM. There we go. And here's our Boot Arguments. So here's what we need. Let's go ahead and we have to type this in. So we'll just come over here, double click, get rid of that stuff, and we'll put in minus V because we want verbose mode. We want keep sims equals one space. We want debug equals 0x100 and we want ALC ID for our audio which that number works that layout number works and for this particular computer I do have a 5000's graphics card I've got a 5500 graphics card in here so I do have to add this You'll need to add this for five and 6,000 cards. So we'll just go ahead and I'll just copy this. 
and put it right at the end. Boom. Okay. Make sure you put a space in between each boot argument. And I just hit enter. Now we're done with that. Platform info. It already has the iMac 20, comma 2. So now we need serial numbers. We need an MLB number and a UUID. We just click generate. And that part is now done for us. How awesome is that? And then UEFI is right here. And all of this stuff is already done for us. Now, I don't want the graphical menu right now. So I'm for now, I'm going to turn this off. Okay. And because I like the text, because I like to see what's going on in case there is a problem. All right. All right, good. So let's go back up here to kernel. And we do need another text. Actually, we need a couple text. All right, so I'm right here in open core. And I'm going to go to gathering files. And we need text for our Ethernet. Like I said, this particular motherboard has a real tech. So I'm going to click here and get the latest one right here for this of this text and I'll just drag it over here and it has to go in the EFI text folder and text and we'll just grab it we want the release version so I'll just drag it in there okay now also while we're at it I'm just going to go ahead and grab this USB inject all and put it over here because we're going to need it for our USB ports. I am going to put a link on my website for this. Um, this is a particular version of USB inject all and I want you to use that version. So I'll put that on my on my downloads page for you guys. By the time you see this video, it'll be up. All right. So we go back. And I think that's all we need. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and save this first. OK, I just saved it. Something else you want to check is this open core version. This is the latest version, but you always want to come over here and click here and just check that you have this set to the latest version and then click get open core. All right. And another really good practice is to go ahead and select all on all of these texts and check for updates. OK, um, I was doing a motherboard for a customer the other day and I didn't do this step. And the Apple ALC, the, the, the audio wasn't working, wasn't working, wasn't working. And it's because there was an older text in here. So everything here is green. It's good to go. And then you just click uh, sync. And it's done. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get out of this particular EFI and save it. Then I'm going to go over to Auxiliary Tools again and open it. And this has a wonderful feature right here. Looks like a phonograph record needle on a record player. <laughs> Anyways, this is where you mount your hidden EFI. So this is my hard drive or my NVMe. So I'm just going to click mount and open config.p list. Now this is the config.p list that is on this computer that I just finished for this customer. And I just want to make sure, yeah, I've got this kex turned off and I've am not using that one. I'm not using these. You can use these if you want. Um, and you can Google to find out what they're for, but it says right here what they're actually for. And then we also, yes, we also need, now this USB ports.kex, that is already, the work is done for you on this free EFI, but I'm going to show you in the next video how to port map nowadays. But right here, we need this particular kex for our Wi-Fi. This has built-in 
uh, Intel Wi-Fi on the motherboard. So we want to include that in our new text. So I'll just close out of here. We're going back to the EFI. We're building open core text. And if you come over here to the gathering files again, you will see this text. Okay, and I want Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So right here is what we need for this particular motherboard, and you need this program. This program is right here. Hello, port. Um, and I'll show you all that a little later, how that works. But you just download this text. I've got it right here. And go ahead and put it in your text folder, the EFI that we're, we just built. Okay? So let's go ahead and just minimize this. We'll go ahead and right-click on here and open with the OC Auxiliary Tools. And we want to make sure that everything is okay. Sometimes this check mark means that everything's okay. This will turn red and have an exclamation point if it has not been saved. And that's an easy thing to do. Now, if you'll notice, I just put that text in there this ITLWM, and it's not showing. So I'm going to click here, and I'm going to click text, and where is it? Right there it is. And add it in, and it already turns it on. And I want you to disable or turn this to false, this uh, USB inject all text. We don't need that just yet, okay? And then we'll save it. So we are good to go. We are good to go. Now, I already stated that you need to have already made your USB stick. And up here, you'll see in the video, there's a link to how to make a boot stick with Mac OS on it. Okay? So you will need another computer to download Mac OS. Whatever, whatever version you want to use, whether it's Mojave, Catalina, Big Sur, Monterey, Ventura, uh, you should have no problems using this text on this particular board. All right. So everything's good. We want to click Save. Right now it's blue. That means I haven't saved it after I made that change. So now we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and put in my USB stick. Let me grab that. Okay. All right, so here is my install macOS Venture, and I'm going to use Auxiliary Tools to open the EFI hidden partition. And right here is my stick, my SanDisk. And I'm just going to mount it, put in my password. And I want to just go over here and make sure there is nothing in here. So I'm going to go ahead and drag the EFI we just built over into here and we should be good we should be good to go and I'm gonna show you the BIOS setting on this particular board most all of these 10th gens it's the same BIOS settings even for 9th gen you know uh, same BIOS settings that we use for everything just about alright so I've got the USB stick in I'm gonna go ahead and close this down we're going to go into the BIOS right now so I can show you what changes we need to make. Start tapping that delete key. All right. So we'll come over here to favorites on this particular gigabyte. And there's a few on here that are just easy to get to. We need CSM support disabled. Secure boot mode on custom is fine. VT-D is disabled. Tweaker, the only thing we need to worry about here, sorry about that, is extreme memory profile. We want it on profile 1, so it picks up the speed of our DDR4 there at 3200. Settings, there's nothing under there that you need to check. I.O. ports, let's check it. So we have our display, which is right now the Radeon uh, 5500. It is in slot 1. All of these settings are fine. We have the audio controller built on the board turned on. Above 4G decoding must be enabled. 
and this stays enabled. Super I.O. We disable the serial port. USB configuration. Make sure everything is enabled. Don't need to worry about that or any of these other items. System info. This tells us, you know, just what our CPU is. Boot. We want to make sure CFG lock is disabled. And we're going to come down here. And first boot option will be our USB stick. Okay, that's important. Windows 10 features needs to be set to Windows 10. And CSM support is turned off. We save and exit. And we can start the boot process. We're going to be coming up and it's going to find our USB stick. Okay, so there it is. There's our clean NVRAM if we wanted to clean it before we got started. We're going to choose Install macOS Ventura. And away it goes. Okay, guys, it's really quick when it comes up to this, so we're ready to, uh, to start erasing this NVMe drive. Okay, so let's go here to Disk Utility, hit Continue, and we want to click here and make sure we show all drives. All right, there they are. So here is the drive I'm going to erase. It's this little 256 gig drive, so I'm just going to click Erase. And I'm going to title it uh, Mac OS. All right. And we do want APFS and GUID partition map. Click Erase. This is all the same as Catalina and all the other ones. Just looks a little different. All right. We'll close out of here. Install Mac OS Ventura. And I'm not going to go through every screen, guys. Um, it just goes pretty quick. It it, it is a big program, so it does reboot several times before it finishes. So after it's uh, done, I'll come back. I don't want to make these videos too long, and we will continue on with the install. And just like that, magic of videos, we are done. All right, guys, let's go ahead and just finish up. This is the same, basically the same process we always go through. That's fine. Uh, not now. Um, if you don't have a network card or a cable attached right now, just go ahead and click. My computer does not connect to the Internet. That way it won't keep looking for the Ethernet controller. So, And I do not have anything hooked up to it right now. So we'll just continue and continue. And I'm not going to transfer anything. Migration Assistant. I'll agree. And I'll agree. And we'll just name it Mac. And give it a password. At least four characters. One, two, three, four. There we go. Continue. And I always turn on Location Services. And I turn off Analytics. And screen time set up later. No sorry for me. You can choose it if you'd like. And you can pick again your light, dark modes, or auto. So there we go. And keyboard assistant. Just do what it says. Just identifying your keyboard. And boom. We are done. Now, I don't have any internet right now. So, on my other computer, I have a USB stick with OC Auxiliary Tools. So, I'm going to grab that. All right. Let's see if I've got it here. Yeah, there it is. So, I, it's a good idea to go ahead and have a USB stick with this on it so you can transfer, so you can transfer the uh, EFI folder to your hard drive. And also, you want this heliport download also. 
which will be on my website. So you can just download those two things. So we'll go ahead and right click open. And there we go. We'll click here to mount the EFI. And we want this one right here, which is my NVMe drive. So we'll mount that, put in password. And then we have to go back and grab this, which is the drive we just used to boot the computer. So there is the EFI, there's the EFI folder. And then I'm just going to go ahead and go right here to the EFI on the hard drive, which is right there. And drag this one into here. So that is it. Now we'll be able to boot the computer without the stick. And while I'm right here, I'm going to go ahead and install Heliport for the uh, Wi-Fi and just agree to all this stuff, guys. And drag this into the Applications folder. All right. Done. So let's pull out, or let's go ahead and eject our stick. And we'll eject this USB 2 that had my OC auxiliary tools on it. All right, there we go. Now we'll restart the computer and watch this thing boot up. Okay, put in a password. And boom, we are in. Now, if we go over here and click on the heliport, we'll be able to... Oh, first time you open this, guys, you got to right-click. Just go like this. Go up here to Applications. Right-click and Open. And then Open. And don't check. And right here, you'll see it. It's kind of faint. It's light gray. This is where we connect our Wi-Fi. Let's see if I remember. Okay, there we go. And now we have internet connection. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's the new way of doing it. I think it's, you know, quicker, easier. You don't have to spend all that time on the uh, config.p list like you used to. So I hope you really enjoyed this. Now, if you want this heliport to turn on or come on automatically when you boot into your computer, just go over here. And they changed this menu. It's kind of It's kind of weird for me to see it like this. It used to be under users and you could add an, an item, but now we have to go over here to general and then login items. And then we click plus and we can go to applications and then heliport open. So now every time the computer reboots, it automatically turns on the Wi-Fi. That's simple, guys. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video. It's great to be doing videos again. I'm glad to be back. And check out technoli.com so you can see what we're offering and send me your computer to get it fixed or send me your Hackintosh to get it to get a uh, new OS put on or whatever you guys want to do. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.